Hello Americans, welcome to our channel. This video is made by free videos from Storyblocks and these images in video we use just for explanation and it's free use also. Woman finds someone living in attic of new home, turns pale when she realizes who it is. When this moment moved into her new home, she immediately fell into a horrible nightmare. She woke up to strange noises coming from the attic space above. When she went up there, she was left in shock. There was someone living there, and when she realized who, her face turned pale. Jane was exacting when she got the keys to her new house. It wasn't the biggest home, but it was cozy and lay in a good neighborhood. The moving company had just delivered her belongings, and now it was up to Jane to unpack and spend her first night. But things wouldn't go as planned. It was already edging toward dinner time after Jane signed the moving company's papers and waved them off. That meant that Jane didn't have time to unpack everything properly. Ultimately, she made a small sitting area and prioritized her bed mostly. She needed to sleep, so that was the most crucial piece of furniture. After the living room had some larger pieces in place and the bed was reassembled, the young homeowner was exhausted. Jane had always loved her bed, but she admitted that those sheets never looked more inviting than they did that day. It was 21.30 o'clock when Jane called it a day. Jane lay in bed, but sleeping was more complicated than she thought. It was a mostly empty house, which echoed a lot, and a new place came with many new sounds. It even felt a bit scary to her. Eventually, she did manage to fall asleep, that is, until she was awakened at 1.13 p.m. Two loud bangs sounded through Jane's bedroom ceiling, and the result was that Jane sat up straight in her bed with scared, wide-open eyes. What the hell was that Jane felt her heart beating in her chest? This was not your everyday neighborhood noise. This was something else, but what? Jane switched on the nightlight on her bedside table and looked around the room. Something had clearly made quite an impact on landing, because Jane could even see the dust particles falling down from her ceiling. That couldn't have just happened on its own. Something heavy fell down on the floor. Jane felt true fear at that moment. She was the only thing in the house at that moment in time, and besides some boxes and furniture downstairs, the house was completely empty of stuff. At least, that was what the frightened woman thought. Because these pounding noises came from above. Jane got out of bed and tried to find answers. Electricity was all installed properly, but Jane had not yet had time to hang up the lamps, so the hallway was pitch dark. Therefore, Jane needed to use her cell phone to see. The scared homeowner reached for her phone and turned on the application. With a mobile flashlight in hand, the shivering Jane navigated the dark hallway outside her room. She moved slowly and watched every inch of that long corridor like a hawk. This was like something out of a horror movie, Jane thought to herself. But hiding like an ignorant coward seemed like a bad idea. Jane already knew that the sound came from upstairs, but there was one problem with that deduction. There was only one floor above Jane's bedroom, and that was a tiny attic. It was only accessible by a pull-down ladder in the hallway she stood in now, and it was very small. Jane was brought to this attic space by her realtor a few weeks ago and remembered the room perfectly. It was the tiniest area, only usable for suitcases and maybe some winter clothes. But with the attic being barely high enough to crouch in, it seemed unlikely to Jane that someone was up there. There was a small window there, but it would be way too high to climb up from outside the house, right? This final thought made Jane nervous as she opened the hatch that pulled down the attic ladder. The ladder folded downward, making a small creaking noise. But that wasn't all Jane had heard. When the hatch opened and the ladder fell, Jane instantly heard that same slamming sound. This time it was almost rhythmic it was like someone had fallen over and was fumbling to get back up again. Jane also heard rustling sounds coming from the tiny attic space. There definitely was something moving up there. But what was it? Jane grew mere frightened by the second. She was alone in a new house, with an intruder inside. This was the last place she wanted to be in right now. But the strong young woman somehow gathered enough courage to snap out of it. It's probably an animal or something. But as Jane climbed the first steps of her attic ladder, she suddenly saw something that made her blood freeze. A black shadow quickly shot past the open attic hatch and then disappeared from view again. Oh my God, Jane whispered to herself. 
whatever moved up there definitely wasn't small. Jane's head only wanted her to quickly run and get to a safe place. But somehow, her body instinctively moved upstairs as if it wanted to follow whatever shot past her seconds ago. Jane first moved her arm up through the hole, shining the flashlight in the attic space. Then Jane's head followed. Standing on one of the final steps, Jane could see inside the attic and scan the entire area. She saw the back wall, which was closest to her. Jane looked here first because if something or someone was hiding there, it could easily have reached her and attacked her. But there was no one there. But then she heard the sound of the attic window moving up and down. That window wasn't locked, but it was definitely closed, which meant that someone came in and out through there. Jane turned around and instantly let out a large sigh. She saw wrappers from food items everywhere, and... There were also practical products lying on the floor, like toothpaste and a bar of soup. And that wasn't all. Jane saw multiple filled garbage bags lying around, and in the center of it all was a rolled-out sleeping bag. There was no denying it anymore. Someone was living here. Jane walked up to the window in full panic. She closed the window and locked it shut to keep the intruder out this time. There was only one logical thing for her to do at this moment. Jane grabbed her phone and called the police. Please come over quickly. Someone broke into my house. After about 30 minutes, a police car pulled into Jane's driveway. Two individuals in uniform stepped out, and Jane guided them to her attic space. They hummed some while digging through the trash on the floor. After that, they opened one of the trash bags and saw that it contained clothing. There was something about these men that Jane did not like. They went through some of the clothes inside the trash bags but never looked properly. After that, they talked to each other in soft voices so Jane couldn't hear. They acted indifferent, speaking in a tone that indicated they didn't want to be there. I'm sorry madam, but we were unable to find any lead for the person who resided in your attic was the statement made by one of the officers. Their visit was short barely ten minutes, and afterward they promised to patrol her neighborhood some more. But Jane had little hope, given their laid-back attitude. That's why when the policeman left, Jane was not able to sleep for the rest of the night. She was afraid before, and with the proof that someone indeed lived inside her house, it got even worse. Jane, therefore, chose to stay awake through the night. She had no choice. When the morning came around, Jane still sat up straight. She kept busy through the night, but her eyes indicated a sleep-deprived woman, she walked up the attic stairs again with an aching back and weak knees. It was light now, which gave her the confidence to do so. I will find evidence myself. When Jane got up to the attic space, she moved through the food wrappers and reached out to the trash bags filled with clothes first. The police hardly looked through them, so Jane doubted their statement of not finding anything. The clothes inside were youthful and looked like boys' clothes to Jane's eye but the biggest clue was yet to come. It was hiding inside that same bag but was covered by the first few layers of clothing. Jane flipped the bag upside down and saw the pieces of clothing fall on the floor. But then she suddenly heard a thumping sound, like something hard fell with it. Jane removed the top layers of pants and shirts and then she saw it. At the bottom of the pile lay a small cell phone. Jane quickly reached down to grab and inspect the device. Luckily, the fall did not break it because the screen switched on instantly when Jane pressed the home button. Jane's face turned pale when the home screen showed her a young man, presumably 12 to 13. Who are you? And why were you in my attic, she said. Jane was unable to unlock the phone but figured that the boy would not leave it behind willingly. He must have forgotten it during his escape. That's when Jane decided it was time to confront this boy with his unusual behavior. The fact that it involved a teenage kid chased away Jane's fear a bit. So now all she could do was wait for his inevitable return to her attic floor. Jane even chose to make it easy on the kid. Jane rested for a bit to gather her strength for the night. Then, when it was time to set her trap, Jane took proper steps to ensure its success. She unlocked the attic window again so the boy could come in without a problem, and she laid the phone in the center of the room. The phone was there as a lure for the boy to come in. But the kid did not know that Jane was already present in the attic space. 
she hid in a dark corner of the room, away from the window's view, and around midnight that day, she heard a familiar sound again. The attic window moved upwards, making its recognizable squeaking sound. Then, a set of legs came through the frame first, and then the rest of the boys landed on the attic floor. He moved quietly, minding every foot he put down. The boy thought he could go in and out unnoticed, but... But that plan was a complete failure, because Jane intervened right before the boy could grab his phone. She planted the phone as a trap and wasn't foul enough to just let him take it and run off. Jane had wound a fishing wire around it, hard to spot but effective for her plan. Jane gave one hard pull, and the phone shot in her direction. Is this what you are looking for, she said while stepping out of the shadows. The boy was shocked by her presence and wanted to escape again. But Jane was closer to the window and blocked his escape pretty easily. Jane wasn't angry or in need of a harsh confrontation. She just wanted answers this was the only way she could get them. Please don't run. Just tell me why you came up here. I mean you no harm after that statement. The boy became visibly emotional. He nodded and sat down slowly. Jane sat across from him on the attic floor. Jane promised to return the boy's phone if he told her his story, and the boy agreed. He said he was the son of the people who lived here before Jane. They moved to a new home, two cities removed, but he never wanted this. They moved because his dad got a new job there, and the commute was easier. But they never thought about the boy's wishes. His friends were here, and he was just starting to like the school he was in. And just like that, he all had to give it up again. Again, Jane asked. Yeah, this is not the first time he explained. My name is Tom, BTT Tom moved around a lot. His father was a successful career man, and he switched jobs often, climbing the ladder of influence every time he joined a new company. And every time that happened, they had to move again. Tom then explained that he simply couldn't take it anymore one day. He wanted his old life back and did something stupid because of it. He waited until his parents were asleep and climbed out the window of his home. I ran away and walked through the night until I reached my old house. Tom spent the rest of the day knowing it was empty. The house was already sold to you, but you had not moved in yet, so I stayed as long as I could. It was an emotional decision but also a practical one because Tom needed basic shelter. I ended up staying for two weeks. Tom lived off canned food and chocolate bars, which he had taken from home. But then Jane officially moved in yesterday. I didn't know what to do when you moved your stuff inside. So I remained in the attic, trying to stay quiet. But last night, I tripped and caused all this commotion. Tom was sorry. It wasn't his intention to scare her. He figured that Jane would be angry at him for living in her home without permission, but instead, he got the opposite response. Jane understood his pain and felt sympathy. Jane told Tom that she moved around a lot, too, as a child, but... But running away is never an option, Tom. We have to face our fears and confront them if we want to win. And in your case, that means confronting your father with his selfish behavior, Tom, found this notion scary, but Jane promised Tom to help him with the conversation. Tom carefully agreed, and after Jane gave Tom's phone back to him, they drove over to his parents' home together. Jane rang the doorbell and saw that a man with an irritated and sleep-filled face walked up to the door, it was after midnight. But once the man, Tom's father, opened up. Once he opened his eyes and saw his son standing there, his eyes lit up instantly. Tom's father was worried beyond belief since he had been searching for his missing son for over two weeks without any luck. Tears swelled in his eyes as he hugged his son intensely. My boy, where have you been? Tom explained the situation and pointed toward Jane as the new owner of their old home. Tom's father burst into tears and said he was sorry for his selfish behavior. He agreed he put work first all this time but never realized its impact on his son. That's when Tom's mother joined in. She had the same reaction, and after being invited inside for a good chat, they all agreed. They needed to move back to their old town. Tom needed to be with his friends, and Tom's father had to commute to work a little further. Jane smiled, and Tom was ecstatic to hear this news. A few weeks later, they moved into their new home in their old town. It was just a few streets from Jane's house, and the revitalized Tom visited Jane frequently. They even became friends. 
she was his unexpected savior. But Jane was just happy to help. Now, she could sleep comfortably again.